This is a time for judgment. Welcome to today's show. I've told people many times over the years the reason that I continually do this and the reason that I have multiple channels and I have new channels is because I want to become YouTube famous, obviously. Otherwise, I would stay on my channel that has half a million subscribers, which I got in pretty much two years. And I probably have over a million if I continually post it there, even though obviously it got shadow banned, so I wasn't able to do that, and I had to continually make other channels. Long story short, I do this to try and wake people up, especially people who are new to this, and then they can go on their journey, hopefully and find Christ, pick up their Bible, and realize that this is all biblical, and hopefully they start critically thinking and using their brain to realize that they've been duped. This video, I want to show you what the plan is for the New World Order. Most of you know this already, but a lot of new people don't. And a lot of new people, and I can relate to this because when I was a kid and I would hear about other countries and I'd hear about communism, and you know, you get it, but you don't get it. You get it, you're like, oh yeah, it sounds like it sucks. But you really need to see it in action. And now with the way technology is and now with the way China really has ramped it up, we see communism in action. And communism is really the blueprint for the new world order. It's slavery. That's what it is. But it's under the illusion that you're free and you're happy. By, of course, the government telling you, you better be happy or we will take your money away. So everyone has to smile and pretend everything's okay. I mean, it's really just an illusion of freedom. It's an illusion of happiness. It's misery. They know it, and the people who are awake know it. Everybody else pretty much is clueless or is convincing themselves that it's good because they'd rather not have somebody name call them, and they'd rather remove freedoms uh, than actually be enslaved. They think that it's better to just be protected by the government. It's really insane to think that this is happening in America, especially with the liberal party that is supposed to be about you know, the everyday man. That's what the liberal party used to represent, not the rich. But now the liberals are the rich elites who are running and controlling the world. So this video I want to talk about and show you communism. Our country wants to be like China. All the countries do. It's the blueprint for, from the World Economic Forum for the New World Order. So I was getting to the point of when I used to hear stuff like that about other countries in China, you, know, you start to just get, you hear a lot of big words, you hear a lot of stuff, and you just kind of snooze off. You're like, whatever, it doesn't affect me. Well, now it affects you. And if you're young and you're out there, you don't even understand what this is about. Let me show you. Nancy Pelosi, Klaus Schwab, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, faces of the New World Order, of course, represents uh, people who represent globalism and modern-day slavery, openly talking about how they admire China, how they admire the way China handled the pandemic, how they admire the way China handled its economy, and how they believe that China is free. Listen out of their own mouths first, and then I'll show you what's really going on. We still support the one China policy. We go there to acknowledge the status quo is what our policy is. There was nothing disruptive about that. It was only about saying China is one of the freest societies in the world. Don't take it from me. That's from Freedom House. Let's it's talk a little bit. Democracy, yeah. Courageous people. Kudos weekly last week with a group of Toronto women was an example. Even with Sun TV watching for any slip, he was asked which country he most admired and referred to China. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted. Uh, but I find it quite interesting. We are coming out thanks also to the leadership of China in terms of fighting the pandemic, in terms of reinvigorating its economy, we have now a window of opportunity to create this global reset which we all need. This global reset is necessary because we have seen that our policies which we pursued before the coronavirus struck us that those policies do not create the necessary inclusion of society necessary for harmonious societal development. And they do not create the sustainability of what we are doing. Just think of the global warming, how fast it is developing in the 
opposite into the negative direction. So we have a great opportunity at this moment, like we had after World War II, to have in some way a new beginning in our global cooperation, in globalization, in managing our global affairs. I hope that we will not miss this opportunity. So those people were telling you that everything is free and wonderful in China, that we need to follow China's blueprint, which I'll show you right now, for what occurred in China, because if you don't know, this stuff I shared on my website, what occurred during all this outbreak and is still occurring is that people were literally locked up in their apartments. They put fences around their homes. That's how deep the quarantine went and said, you can't go outside. They killed people's dogs and cats who got outside of the house. They killed them because they said, oh, they're a threat because they could spread it. But that wasn't real. the real reason they killed them because these people are monsters, just like the people in our government. And they're in bed with China. And of course, most of you should know that China has bought up a large amount of land in America, which you would think wouldn't even be something that's allowed to happen. But only in America it is, right? In other countries you need, be, I mean, how in the world do you even go to another country and buy a house there or, and do any of these things without having visas, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, you know, the Chinese are allowed to come here by our farmland. So if you don't know where this is going, that's where it's going. So look at these clips. Let me show you China. Let's show you the quarantine, how they handled the quarantine. Cause remember you just heard of their own mouths. It's a free country, it's wonderful. And they set the blueprint, of course, and Trudeau admires it, and that's what he wants for Canada. That's what we want, apparently, in America and the whole world order. And take a look at some of the other stuff, too, with your bank and how the government just pulled all the money out of the banks. And people went to the ATM and couldn't get any of their money. Or things like, I don't know, the social score I showed you where your behavior is monitored and they'll slap you in the face if you question them. And they'll take your money away and they'll freeze your bank out and they'll imprison you. Here's China, because this is what the new world order looks like. Horrifying videos have emerged from Shanghai. They've been making the rounds on social media as well. Residents can be heard screaming from their windows. Under the strict policy, residents are not allowed to leave their homes even for food. The video is from one of the biggest residential compounds in the city. A video circulating on social media shows people yelling from their windows after being confined to their homes for almost a week. Out in a nightmare for 26 million people living in China's biggest city of Shanghai. Following the lockdown triggered by a wave of coronavirus, Shanghai residents have been forbidden from leaving their house. Residents are totally dependent on local authorities to provide them with essential supplies. However, besides supplies, Shanghai residents are now feeling a shortage of individual freedom. A video is doing rounds on Chinese microblogging application Weibo, which shows people who are protesting over the lack of supplies from their balconies and were forced into silence by drones. The video shows Chinese drones directing people to comply with the COVID restrictions and control their soul's desire for freedom. The drones can be heard saying, do not open your windows and sing. Beside drones, authorities are also using robotic dogs with loudspeakers taped on their back to patrol the streets and inform people that they should wear masks, wash their hands regularly and keep checking their temperature. Local media reports have also said that Chinese authorities have been using drones to disinfect some public areas where COVID-19 cases were reported. Public anger is simmering over chaos to get food or to get into hospitals and over videos like this showing a funeral home worker refusing to take a COVID victim because the person was not dead. That the video went viral here led to government officials admitting the mistake and ordering an investigation. Across China, there are now close to 400 million people living under some form of COVID restrictions or lockdown. With low expectations for a return to normal life or open borders soon. This expat couple in Shanghai went ahead with their wedding over Zoom. The ceremony.
ceremony was officiated from the U.S. They had a get-together outside, but because of the lockdown, couldn't go past their front gate. Some 1,000 depositors gathered in front of a sub-branch of the People's Bank of China to voice their anger against alleged corruption. Protesters were among the thousands of customers who opened accounts at six rural banks in Henan and neighboring Enwei province. According to reports, banks froze millions of dollars worth of deposits in April, telling customers that they were upgrading their internal systems. All cash withdrawals were suspended since then, leaving thousands of accounts, account holders without access to their funds. During the protests, security guards shoved the protesters to prevent them from gathering near the bank as they chanted slogans. Protesters then responded with stone pelting to push back the guards. What had been a local scandal so far became a national issue recently after news about the misuse of a COVID tracking app began to circulate. According to reports, many who set out for Zengzhou to demand action from regulators found that their health status on the app had turned red, thus preventing them from traveling. Five officials have been subsequently punished for misusing the health code system. Health Pass is an integral part of China's strict zero COVID strategy and is required to access the majority of public spaces, including shopping centers and public transport. Everywhere she goes, Ouyang Haoyu is followed. What she buys, how she behaves, is tracked and scored to show how responsible and trustworthy she is. It's called the social credit system, and in one version now being tested, a person's reputation is scored on a scale of 350 to 950. And how you, with a good score of 752, is okay with it. In fact, most people are. Uh, it's a mechanism like uh, pushes you to become a better citizen. It's big data meets big brother, expanding how the government monitors, understands, and ultimately controls its 1.4 billion citizens. Thanks to advances in artificial intelligence and facial recognition, and a web of more than 200 million surveillance cameras. Are people bothered by privacy concerns? We think uh, the lack of camera keep the safety is uh, really good. We can accept it. Companies are experimenting with the algorithms to help the government create the new national social credit system. The government also has pilot projects. In one, citizens are required to do hours of unpaid work to get benefits. And scores are docked for things like littering, a messy yard, gossip, even jaywalking. Video of offenders is shown on the local news. And information collectors like Joe I. Nee are paid to report on their neighbors. Her quota, 10 entries a month. Like the man who carried a drunk person home. A good deed, she says. Good social credit gets rewarded with perks like cheap loans and travel deals. But a bad score means public shame and worse. Huang Hui Jun lost a court case and didn't pay. Now he's on a government blacklist. I can't buy airplane or train tickets, he says, and the list goes on. Being discredited makes it hard to get a job or put kids in top schools. The social credit system will go nationwide next year, and few here are willing to criticize it. Something that may pose a risk itself for a bad score and the life that comes with it. China is one of the freest societies in the world. Don't take it from me. That's from Freedom House. Let's it's talk just a little bit. Democracy. Yeah. So it's funny, too, about China. I said, even if you made a video like this in China, you wouldn't be allowed to probably live. Now, in America, we're getting to the point where you can't make videos about the American government at all. For the most part, once they get their eyes on it, and if you're not for this new world order crap, they censor you. That's what obviously what I've been dealing with and many people who are against this have been dealing with. I wouldn't be surprised if they start censoring people who talk negatively about China in America, which is insane to think about. But I wouldn't be surprised if this video gets censored or other ones in the future. So for those of you who have been wondering, what is this blueprint of a new world order? What does it look like? How is it going to flow? You just saw... What's going on over there?
over there. And now you hear these world leaders, Klaus Schwab, who has more power probably than most people, who is a Rothschild, by the way, which means he's Federal Reserve. The Rothschilds run the Federal Reserve, so Klaus Schwab is uh, bloodline to them. So he's a family member of the Federal Reserve, the head of the Federal Reserve. So he is, and the, the Rothschilds, of course, are the family that, uh, if you read a lot of studies that people have done, a lot of books that people have done from like the 70s and the 80s, talking about the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, etc., they do deal directly with Satan. I mean, they do massive rituals where they summon him literally in the room. For those that don't believe that, I know it sounds crazy to think because of, you know, uh, just how it sounds, right? Oh, yeah, Satan's in your living room. Oh, my gosh, that's not, you know. But if you watch my videos and you watch my channel, I showed you this constant theme, this obsession with God and the devil and how they constantly do this and how these rituals are being performed out in public, and I hope people would see that. But back to Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab and they, these families do real, deal directly with Satan. That's why Klaus Schwab is in the position he's in with the World Economic Forum. I mean, he is in deep. He's not just some guy that randomly was put in this position. They knew that this organization would be the one that grooms and brings in and then engineers people into all of the stuff, the climate change, all these agendas that are all satanic agendas that have nothing to do with what you think they have to do with. Okay? The climate change, I mean, I've seen the videos I've done on it. Watch them if you haven't. But Schwab... Trudeau, who's a product of the World Economic Forum, but was groomed by the World Economic Forum. Pelosi, this walking corpse, Pelosi, who can't even complete a sentence, is telling us that it's one of the freest countries in the world. Does that look like freedom to you? People screaming in horror out of their apartment buildings because they're not allowed to leave. Military standing outside their apartment buildings, fenced in. Having your bank accounts completely drawn. Does that sound familiar? Because they did it in Canada when they took money out of tr tr truck protesters. Uh, bank accounts, and et cetera, et cetera. This is what it looks like, that. So if you're out there and you're listening, I know a lot of people out there listen who don't like me, and they don't listen to my videos, some of the stuff I say. Like, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm neither. I'm trying to tell both sides that we're going to be human beings and we're going to disagree on almost everything probably, lots of things. But they want us at war with each other so they can bring this in. And anyone out there that sees China and thinks that it's a good thing and that we need to turn this country to it, why don't you just get out and go to China? Oh, wait, because you get off a plane in China, they'll shoot you on the spot. You wouldn't even be allowed to engage in that society. That's what people want. That's the amazing thing. These people, I didn't know, and I was thinking about this the other day. I think this is what it means, though. People would say cucks. I don't want to say that word wrong. Cucks, cucks. And I was like, well, I don't know what that is, you know? And I guess it's like really submissive people who like to be dominated or something. I think that's what it is. If I'm wrong, my apologies. I'm not looking it up while I'm recording this. But that's really what this society has turned into. These people who are liberal, they like it. It's like they want people to dump candle wax on their balls and lock them in a cell. I mean, that's what this communist government is. And they're more hurt by words. I mean, it is insane, anyone who wants it. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're young and you don't understand what this is about, it's about control. And if you're out there and you're listening and you don't like me, don't like me. I don't care. I don't want you to. But this is something that will affect you. This will affect you. And you will say it when it's too late that, oh, my goodness, why didn't we do something to stop it? Or why didn't we fight against it? Or why did we all fight it amongst each other while they were building this out? The Chinese World Order, which is now the American New World Order, which is really the global world order. I thank you guys for being here. Hope you're doing well. God bless all of you and your families.